In this video, we will be discussing the muscles of the arm. Anatomically, we define the arm as the region between the shoulder and elbow joints. We refer to the more distal portion of the upper limb as the forearm. To orient you to what you're seeing here, this is a right upper limb, and this is the anterior face of the right upper limb. So the shoulder joint is superior or proximal. The elbow joint is inferior or distal. This is the lateral side, and this is the medial side. So let's begin with the anterior arm. I'll be discussing three muscles in the anterior arm, all of which are innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. And we'll use the musculocutaneous nerve along its course to guide us through the anterior arm. Remember that the musculocutaneous nerve can be found here as the most lateral component of our M that is formed by the lateral and medial cords of the brachial plexus. And we see immediately as we go distally along the musculocutaneous nerve that it pierces this muscle here. And this is the coracobrachialis muscle. As its name suggests, the coracobrachialis muscle runs from here, the coracoid process, all the way down to the humerus. And contraction of the coracobrachialis muscle will both adduct and flex the glenohumeral joint. You can see now the musculocutaneous nerve goes through coracobrachialis, and then continues to run distally along the anterior arm. And it's essentially running in a plane between the other two muscles that it innervates the biceps brachii, which you can see here, and the brachialis muscle, which you can see here. Starting with the biceps brachii, the biceps brachii is named for its two proximal heads and proximal attachments. Biceps has a short head here and a long head here. The short head actually shares a proximal attachment with the coracobrachialis muscle. Both of them attach at the coracoid process whereas the long head has a bit of a longer course. It goes through the intertubercular groove of the humerus here and attaches at the supraglenoid tubercle. Biceps brachii also has two distal attachments, two asymmetrically sized tendons, the longer of which is referred to purely as the tendon of the biceps. It goes here through the cubital fossa before attaching to the radius. And the smaller tendon is the bicipital aponeurosis, which forms the ceiling or roof of the cubital fossa and has been dissected away in this prosection. The final and deepest muscle of the anterior arm is the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle originates on the humerus and terminates distally on the ulna. And the brachialis muscle flexes the elbow joint. Moving on to the posterior arm, I want to first take a step back and notice how here we have an excellent view of the axillary nerve emerging from the quadrilateral space and innervating the deltoid muscle here. So let's turn our attention now to the triceps brachii muscle. The triceps brachii muscle is named for its three heads, the long head, is here, the lateral head is here, and the medial head is actually deep to the long head. The long head of the triceps attaches quite superiorly at the scapula, whereas the lateral and medial heads of the triceps attach to the humerus. The triceps is innervated by the radial nerve, which you can see along almost its entire course in the arm here, Remember that the radial nerve originates on the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. But then it runs along the humerus in the radial groove, and it gives off branches that we can see here to all three heads of the triceps brachii muscle. Distally, the triceps brachii attaches to the ulna, and contraction of the triceps extends the elbow joint.